good morning all of you uh, so any clarifications on uh, integral methods i think i've been uh, going a little bit uh, slow on the last uh, two three classes so takes enough time for you to understand uh, what i'd been doing so last class we had looked into the uh, approximate solution for flow with pressure gradient the von karman polhausen method and uh, applied that to heat transfer problem and finally we also looked into an approximation to the uh, von karman polhausen solution okay the ordinary differential equation can be simplified and directly integrated by what is called as the wals approximation okay so there he has uh, he has uh, plotted h of k as a function of k and found that is a very linear curve and he has given the approximate profile for the linear uh, curve and that's what if you use it becomes much straight forward to integrate the uh, uh, equation to get the momentum thickness okay so once you get the momentum thickness from there you can get your uh, other thicknesses like displacement thickness and boundary layer thickness which are required to calculate the flow average flow properties like skin friction coefficient and uh, the same way you can uh, solve the heat transfer problem and in the heat transfer problem uh, you will get an ordinary differential equation for uh, zeta which is the ratio of uh, your uh, thermal boundary layer thickness to momentum boundary layer thickness once you have the expression for momentum boundary layer thickness so therefore you can calculate your average integral heat transfer quantities like heat transfer coefficient and therefore you can get the expressions for nusselt number okay so this this is the standard procedure for all the solutions whether whether it is similarity solution or integral solution this is the standard procedure in the integral solution you guess a profile you know you approximate the velocity profile and temperature profile and from there you calculate your boundary layer thickness and thermal momentum and the thermal boundary layer thickness okay whereas in the case of uh, similarity solution you have to solve the ordinary differential equation numerically by some shooting technique or whatever and get the curvature at the wall and from there you can get the other properties such as skin friction coefficient and uh, uh, also you can get your boundary layer thickness and other thicknesses and for heat transfer you can also get the um, slope of the temperature profile at the wall and from there you can calculate your expression for heat transfer coefficient and nusselt number okay so what we will do today uh, so we had so far looked at uh, application of integral techniques to for flows without pressure gradient that is a uh, similar to the blasius similarity solution we approximated that with the integral method and uh, also we extended that to flows including the pressure gradient terms that is like the falkner scan similarity solution we can apply the integral methods for a similar problem for a wedge with different wedge angles and we can derive approximate solutions for these okay we had also looked at uh, the case of circular cylinder okay which is uh, which is a limiting case uh, which is a stagnation flow uh, and also the heat transfer for uh, flow past the circular cylinder now we will uh, look at a case where you can consider a simpler case or maybe even the wedge uh, but we will take a simpler case that is a flow past a flat plate uh, however the boundary condition here need not be a uniform wall temperature or uniform heat flux okay so most of the real cases uh, you will find that the temperatures are actually varying along the surface okay so if you want to consider a non uniform uh, temperature or non uniform heat flux so how do we solve such kind of problems okay we do not have a uh, straight forward similarity solution to such kind of problems but it is quite likely uh, that we can develop a similarity solution for a particular case where your variation is predetermined that is if you have a flat plate and your variation of the wall temperature is something like a power law x power m variation okay where m is some a uh, real number and so this is a power law kind of a profile so for this uh, you can develop a similarity solution also okay uh, we can also very easily solve this by uh, integral methods which we will see now and it need not be a variation like this it can be any kind of variation okay that is the advantage of the approximate methods okay the approximate method give you a lot of flexibility 
in approaching problems with different kinds of boundary conditions and also things like uh, where the boundary condition there is an unheated starting length okay so there is no similarity solution if you have an unheated starting length so these kind of problems with the variation in the boundary temperature and the heat flux can be easily solved using the approximate solution okay so today we will look at uh, extending the simpler approximate solutions to a case where you have more complicated boundary conditions so uh, the first case we are going to do is non uniform surface temperatures okay so here you can consider a flat plate where your temperature is varying in an arbitrary manner okay and of course you have your free stream velocity and free stream temperature and we will look at a particular technique called the Duhamel superposition method. for solving this problem okay so the specified condition is something like this you can uh, you can uh, maintain locations where you want to specify a particular wall temperature for example let us call this as uh, zeta at the location zeta equal to 0 you start with some specified temperature okay that could be something like a T T wall 1 so let me draw how the wall temperature profile will look so this is my plot of uh, T wall of course as a function of my position so at this particular location zeta equal to 0 I will have for example a piecewise constant uh, value of wall temperature which is T wall 1 okay so this is existing till a value of zeta which is equal to zeta 1 okay so like this I will have multiple piecewise constant values of surface temperature okay so this is a simpler case to begin begin with of course your actual variation need not be piecewise constants you know, it can be a gradual variation smooth continuous variation okay so like this we can look at temperatures which are success, successively increasing the wall temperatures which are successfully increasing in a piecewise constant manner okay so like that you can go up to some value of uh, finally zeta n all right so this is how your surface temperature is now plotted as a increasingly uh, you know a piecewise uh, constant which is increasing okay so this is like an approximation to uh, a profile which is like this suppose your wall temperature profile was this the, the basic approximation for this is to assume piecewise constants you break this continuous curve into piecewise constants okay and uh, you have an increasing trend in the wall temperature. okay so for this how do we approach the problem okay thankfully the equation that we are solving the energy equation is uh, linear once you know the corresponding velocity profiles so the velocity profiles are not going to get affected as long as your properties are not affected by the temperature okay so in that case uh, your uh, velocity is decoupled from the temperature and you can plug in the particular value of velocity at a location into the energy equation and your energy equation becomes quasi linear and therefore for any linear uh, partial differential equation if you have uh, varying boundary conditions okay you can break the solution into multiple solutions and superpose the solutions for each boundary conditions linearly okay so the resulting solution is a linear combination or linear superposition of multiple solutions each corresponding to a different boundary condition okay so if you solve by method of separation of variables you will know that uh, for example the heat conduction problem okay the method of separation of variables will work if you have 
uh, for example homogeneous boundary conditions in three directions and one non homogeneous boundary condition okay for example in conduction case you will maintain this at some high temperature and the remaining three sides or maybe you can assume that uh, or you can non dimensionalize the temperature in such a way that the non dimensional temperature is zero okay for this you can solve uh, the conduction equation 2d conduction equation by means of separation of variables okay so there will be an eigen value problem in this direction basically where you have two homogeneous boundary conditions in the other uh, direction you apply the uh, remaining homogeneous boundary condition and finally whatever non homogeneous boundary condition is there to get the final constants okay but if you have non homogeneous boundary conditions on all the four sides so how do you solve this problem you can still still solve it by separation of variables but you need eigen value problems okay for eigen value problems you need homogeneous boundary condition in a particular direction so to do that if suppose these were non zero okay this was some something like tc1 tc2 and tc3 which were not zero okay so you can break this into problem where you have th here and uh, you can put tc1 here tc3 and uh, zero okay uh, uh, or what you can if you want to make it completely homogeneous you can break this as three zeros here plus you can make the other three as zeros and you can make this as tc1 plus of course you can make these uh, three as zeros and this is your tc3 plus this is your tc2 and the other three zeros so you can you can apply you know eigen value problems in different directions you know in this case you have y direction y direction you have x direction here in this case you have the x direction okay so you create four equivalent eigen value problems and you get solutions for each of these case okay with one non homogeneous boundary condition and finally you superpose all these four solutions and that will give you the solution for this problem okay this can happen only if the partial differential equation is linear and conduction equation is linear right so the same way if you look at uh, the convective heat transfer the energy equation con governing convective heat transfer that is also linear so therefore if you have a combination of multiple boundary conditions like this you can superpose solutions where you have for example you have multiple wall temperatures you can solve one problem where you have t wall one throughout okay and the solution to that is known plus you have another problem where from zeta equal to zeta 1 to the end you have t wall 1 minus t wall 2 or t wall 2 minus t wall 1 okay that is the delta delta t wall so that that is that is applied to the entire plate and again you you know the solution for that and from zeta equal to zeta 2 till the end so that is you have t wall 3 minus t wall 2 <coughs> so like that you keep on applying successive delta and you apply that as your boundary condition and you solve the problem now if you if you do that you have individual solutions where you have an unheated starting length and then the rest of the plate where you have a uniform temperature okay so like that you break up the problem into multiple boundary conditions and then you get the solutions you already have the solution so you add them you superpose all the solutions together and that will give you the solution for this problem okay that is why it is called as a superposition method okay so this is also called the Duhamel method uh, so let me so let me indicate this as t wall 2 this is t wall 3 t wall 4 and so on so this is your t wall n n minus 1 okay uh, or okay let me call this as t wall n okay so the solution for these is anyway you have to solve the energy equation boundary conditions are now at y equal to 0 you do not have a constant value of temperature but t equal to t wall which is a function of x okay and the other boundary conditions are the same 
y going to infinity t is equal to t infinity and at x is equal to 0 okay now following some analogy similar to the conduction problem where also the partial differential equation is linear and you can uh, convert the problem into equivalent four equivalent problems with convenient boundary conditions so you can do the same way here also and you can superpose superpose the solution so therefore the solution for this problem will be something like you can take one problem like this where you have your free stream temperature t infinity okay and this is your starting from your zeta equal to 0 entire plate you maintain at temperature t wall 1 right so this is your first problem and already you have the solution uniformly heated plate right from without any unheated starting line okay so the uh, if you non dimensionalize the temperature your solution to be found out will be in the form phi for the case zeta equal to 0 and it is a function of x and y will be t minus t infinity by t wall 1 minus t infinity this is the way I am going to non dimensionalize okay so and how does the corresponding wall temperature the non dimensional temperature profile look at the wall if I if I plot this uh, phi at zeta equal to 0 x comma y equal to 0 so I am I am plotting the temperature at the wall so this will become t wall 1 okay and throughout it is t wall 1 okay so therefore it will be just 1 everywhere all right so this is one case now I can break break it up into multiple problems okay my second problem will be what so now I have solved one problem where everywhere it is t wall 1 but now you can see from zeta equal to zeta 1 to zeta 2 it is t wall 2 so now what is the next problem that I have to solve okay so to do that what should I what should I do now I should not solve for any heat transfer problem till zeta 1 because I already have solved it here okay so I, sh I should maintain what is what is something called as the unheated starting link till zeta 1 right and what should be the free stream velocity that I should take so that there will not be any heat transfer here now this is already at t wall 1 okay so I have to choose a free stream velocity such that there will not be any heat transfer so that this remains unheated so what is that free stream velocity that I have to take I cannot take t infinity if I take t infinity the t infinity is different from t wall 1 hmm? t wall 2 minus t wall 1 why it should be t wall 1 okay so if I take a free stream which is at t wall 1 so this is also at t wall 1 so therefore there will not be any heat transfer till here now at this point onwards this will be at t wall 2 till zeta 2 okay so now I can introduce another non dimensional phi corresponding to zeta equal to zeta 1 onwards okay now how do I non dimensionalize this t minus t wall 1 by t wall 2 minus t wall 1 exactly okay so if you draw the non dimensional profile at the wall versus x how does it look now initially till zeta 1 there will not be any heat transfer so from here it will start and this will be 1 throughout so this will be a t wall 2 throughout okay so that means here this portion is now t wall 1 this entire portion is t wall 2 okay so now you are solving for t wall 2 minus t wall 1 that is the difference that you are solving okay 
so that means now you have solved for t wall 1 here now here you have already solved for t wall 1 plus t wall 2 minus t wall 1 so that is basically as t wall 2 now same way you have to break this into problems depending on the number of piecewise constants that you have all right so now if you extend this to I'll just give you a representation for the third one so this plus this plus okay so till zeta equal from zeta equal to 0 to zeta equal to zeta 1 you have t wall 1 okay now from zeta equal to up to zeta 2 you have t wall 2 now you have to maintain t wall 3 throughout okay so to do this again we take assume a free stream velocity where you are maintaining everywhere as now t wall 2 and your free stream not everywhere I am sorry from zeta equal to 0 to zeta equal to zeta 2 as t wall 2 and your free stream velocity is now t wall 2 from zeta 2 onwards it will be t wall 3 so you maintain everywhere as t wall 3 and you define your phi as zeta equal to zeta 2 comma x comma y which is equal to t minus t wall 2 by t wall 3 minus t wall 2 so if you plot again phi at y equal to 0 as a function of x okay so till your zeta equal to zeta 2 there is no heat transfer from here it becomes 1 okay so so this is how you get different solutions okay now you have actually solved here for the remainder t wall 3 minus t wall 2 for this particular region okay so already you had solved for t wall 2 minus t wall 1 and also for t wall 1 minus t infinity so finally that will be t wall 3 minus uh, t infinity okay so then you can superpose all these solutions together Yes, but there will be heat transfer in zeta to zero, zeta at zero to zeta is equal to one because temperature is different from the wall temperature. Yeah, so you have to maintain this at t wall two throughout because you have already solved for this till here. You're not interested in this region, okay? So you maintain this entire region at t wall two, and then this will be from t wall three. So t here also, you have already solved here, okay? So you don't need any solution. The solution is already there that is this solution till this region you already have solution from this so you do not have to solve for anything here so you maintain a unheated starting length forcibly by maintaining the free stream temperature and this the same the same way here okay so you already have solved from here to here so you maintain a same temperature equal to the free stream temperature so that there is no heated length okay so therefore uh, you define your phi in generic terms as t minus t wall zeta n minus 1 by t wall zeta n minus t wall zeta n minus 1. This is your generic formula for defining your non dimensional phi, okay. So, where uh, for example, if n equal to 1, so that is. Uh, uh, basically that is that is your zeta 0 that is this first case okay n equal to 2 that is your second case n equal to 3 will be this particular case okay so this is a generic formula how you are defining your non dimensional temperature okay and uh, the non dimensional form of the energy equation will be u d phi by dx plus at y equal to 0 now what will be the value of phi now till uh, your x is greater than 0 or maybe you can say uh, 
uh, if you want to write it in generic terms zeta n minus 1 to zeta n okay so this should be what 0 and for x greater than uh, yeah so for x greater than or equal to zeta n it should be 1 okay can you just uh, check that it has to be zeta eta, eta n minus 2 minus 1 is that right okay so when you start with uh, of course something negative it means it is you can say free stream okay free stream so there it will be 0 and then uh, when you start with uh, n equal to 1 so up to for this case so up to eta 0 basically you do not have any heat transfer from here onwards uh, you have uh, greater than that you have your uh, phi equal to 1 okay so this is your generic solution okay and this is your generic way of non dimensionalizing phi now therefore the solution to the problem for temperature t minus t infinity so this is what we finally want to find out so now we have broken this into sub problems and for each already we have the solution okay we have the unheated starting length problem okay so we can just uh, combine all these for the case where your zeta equal to 0 how do we express t minus t infinity t minus t infinity is phi zeta equal to 0 times t wall 1 minus t infinity okay so this is t wall 1 minus t infinity into phi zeta equal to 0 x comma y okay plus the next problem will be T wall T minus T wall one, which is T wall two minus T wall one into phi zeta equal to zeta one x comma y plus all the way till uh, T wall eta n minus T wall eta n minus one phi eta n x comma y so that is your final this thing okay so t wall eta n minus t wall eta n minus 1 that is the last uh, this thing okay so you keep adding up all these uh, solutions such a way that finally if you add up you get the solution to the problem where you have variation like this in the boundary condition okay so already we have the solution to phi phi is what t minus you can you can look at this t minus t infinity by t wall minus t infinity so what is suppose if you assume a cubic temperature profile so what is the how can we write phi huh? suppose you assume cubic temperature profile you non dimensionalize it y1 minus correct correct you are what you have said is correct but y1 minus you are what you are saying is correct but it should be 1 minus why it should be 1 minus huh signs have changed no how did we define the non dimensional temperature theta when we were fitting a cubic profile t minus t wall by t infinity minus t wall so my phi is what so that should be 1 minus theta right so therefore what what it should be 1 minus 3 by 2 y by delta t plus 
1 by 2 y by delta t the whole cube correct so this this is the profile satisfying the condition x greater than or equal to zeta n minus 1 right so where so this is the corresponding wall temperature so uniform wall temperature correct corresponding to that this is the profile in the boundary layer thermal boundary layer now I already know the solution so only thing I have to now linearly combine all the solutions that is all and how do you check that how do you know that this is the correct solution correct for way of superposing the solutions how do you verify that the simplest verification is getting the boundary condition itself so you apply this at y equal to 0 what it will be now until so this profile will be 1 everywhere okay so this will be t wall 1 minus t infinity okay suppose you want to check that at uh, between zeta equal to zeta 1 to zeta 2 that this gives me t wall 2 minus t infinity does it give that is the check right so this is t wall 2 minus t wall 1 and this is 0 before and it is 1 between zeta equal to 1 zeta 1 and zeta 2 and the other things are all 0 okay so t wall 1 t wall 1 cancel so this is t wall 2 minus t infinity so this retrieves my boundary condition okay this is a good check that therefore this is the correct solution because your boundary condition also is a part of the solution right so this is the therefore how you have to write it and if you check if the wall boundary condition are retrieved then let me call this as uh, equation number 1 okay then 1 is correct okay or 1 is represented correctly okay so now that is it once we rep write, write the solution like this this is valid if you have a piecewise constant variation in the actual case the variation should be continuous so instead of having a summation of piecewise constants we can replace that by an integral which represents a continuous summation okay so that is what we are going to do now so I would like to rather than writing t wall uh, zeta minus z, uh, t wall zeta n minus 1 I am going to introduce delta t wall n which is equal to t wall zeta n minus t wall zeta n minus 1 so this is my representation so therefore equation 1 can be written as t x comma y minus t infinity is equal to t wall 1 minus t infinity into phi 0 comma x comma y so this first sub, uh, notation here corresponds to zeta okay so zeta equal to 0 plus I can write the rest as summation uh, n equal to 1 to totally n delta t wall n phi zeta n comma x comma y so the rest of them I am just summing over those n number of discrete uh, intervals okay so that I can put under a big summation like this is that right so if the temperature variation is not a piecewise constant but actually is something like this which you have approximated as a piecewise constant okay so now I am going to 
convert this discrete summation into a continuous integral okay that is all I need to do. So for wall temperature variation which is not piecewise constant but continuous so that is either linearly increasing or uh, not linearly it is continuously increasing or decreasing you can rewrite this discrete summation as T wall zeta equal to 0 minus T infinity into phi 0 comma x comma y plus integral 0 to x phi x zeta x y now how do I write this in an integral delta t so I am going to write this as d t wall by d zeta which is the dummy variable d zeta okay so all I am doing is I am converting this discrete summation into a continuous integral so if I have a finite slope and the slope is continuously varying with the location okay so all I need to do is get the slope of the wall temperature variation with respect to eta zeta and that will be used here okay so this will this is also called as the Duhamel's superposition integral okay let us call this as number 2 this is referred to as the Duhamel's superposition integral okay so the general super superposition which we discussed above is a general method and usually it is applied where you have this discrete piecewise constant kind of approximation if you do not make that but directly you put the slope of the wall temperature variation as a continuous variation if you do that then the resulting expression is called the Duhamel's integral method okay so now once you know the local variation of the temperature now we can calculate all the other things like the wall heat flux for example so now for example in this case we had varied the wall temperature and now for the varying wall temperature case we want to calculate what is the corresponding variation in the wall flux the wall flux also varies right so it is not a constant anymore the wall flux also keeps varying with the x location so we can calculate and write an expression for so the local wall flux can be estimated as now this is a function of x of course and uh, that will be written as t wall 0 minus t infinity into h 0 comma x plus integral 0 to x h zeta x into dt wall by d zeta into d zeta where your h of zeta comma x is nothing but minus k d phi by dy zeta x comma y equal to 0 right my this is my definition of heat transfer coefficient minus minus k dt by dy by t wall minus t infinity okay so phi is nothing but your t minus t infinity by t wall minus t infinity so this is your heat transfer coefficient so if you differentiate this with respect to y at y equal to 0 you can replace your phi as directly uh, now that minus k d, d phi by dy as directly h okay now so how do you calculate the local heat transfer coefficient so already we know for cubic profile
my d phi by d y at y equal to 0 what is the value minus 3 by 2 delta t okay so also I know the delta t okay uh, so how do I know that because delta t is equal to delta into uh, zeta okay and I have got an expression earlier which we derived for the flat place flat plate case with unheated starting length okay so that comes out as 0 0.976 by Prandtl number to the power one third 1 minus so the unheated starting length there was assumed as x naught in any generic case where you know the location of the unheated starting length you can replace that x naught by the z here the whole power 3 by 4 the entire thing raised to the power one third right so this was what we derived for flat plate with unheated starting length so this has to be substituted into this expression to calculate the heat transfer coefficient and uh, so do you remember how that comes out do you remember the expression for heat transfer coefficient that we derived earlier after we substitute this and also for delta delta we can assume a cubic velocity profile and we got an expression in terms of Reynolds number right so that and this we substitute into this expression for h we get a final expression do you recollect that 0 0.331 k by x into Prandtl number to the power what 1 by 3 R e power 1 by 2 into one minus zeta by x the whole power three by four the entire thing power minus one by three this is what we had derived all right so therefore you substitute this value of h uh, into this expression now h is a function of zeta okay so that zeta will tell you what is the unheated starting length for that particular problem so when you are breaking this problem into multiple boundary conditions for each con uh, configuration you have an unheated starting length so it starts initially at zeta equal to 0 then zeta 1 then zeta 2 like that you have location of the unheated starting length keep shifting so that value of zeta has to be used in calculating the local heat transfer coefficient and that goes into this expression right here okay so that will give us the value of local wall heat flux which is 0 0.331 k by x so this is a constant term which will come out and the rest of the terms that is t wall 0 minus t infinity this is your term and h the other terms we have taken out as constant now for the very first case h of 0 there is no unheated starting length therefore this will be 1 plus you have integral 0 to x in this case you have the unheated start starting length so there you put 1 minus zeta by x minus 1 by 3 dt wall by d zeta is equal all right so this is your final expression for calculating the local variation in the heat flux all right so uh, so what we'll do is uh, tomorrow we will apply this to a problem i will uh, just uh, do for a simple case where you have a linear variation what happens if, if you have a linear variation then we will calculate the heat transfer coefficient and the local heat flux wall heat flux okay now 
what happens now if you if you have a continuous variation like this and apart from that if you also have local jumps something like this so you have a continuous variation and suddenly you have a jump here and again you have a continuous variation so it is what piece wise continuous okay so in such a case uh, you know the location of these jumps may be at zeta 1 zeta 2 or so the same expression plus you have to account for these jumps local jumps local discontinuities okay so then your expression for q all double prime will be h of 0 comma x plus whatever you had before plus what should you do so this is the same as this correct now additionally you have this local discontinuity so what you should do to account for that so once again that becomes locally discrete so then you have to make this again discrete this becomes h into delta t for continuous variation we re, we replace the discrete uh, representation with the continuous thing now once once you have a discrete jump or once again you will have to replace this integral with the summation okay so summation suppose you have say k number of jumps okay I am going to go from i equal to 1 to k delta t wall into h that is it okay so this will take care of both the continuous variation wherever and wherever you have discrete jumps at these locations you have you have to write as delta t h and sum them okay so this will give you the local variation of heat flux so with this we will stop uh, tomorrow we will work out solve an example for assuming a linear variation in the wall temperature and we will see how to calculate your wall flux okay. <laughs>